Over the past year and a half, we've installed quite a few MicroSwiss Flowtech hotends. One I was really hoping for is a version that would work with my X1 Carbon as well as my P1S, so that I could swap the nozzle as needed without having to remove the entire hotend. Last year at 3D Printopia, I got to see one of these in person and was told they were getting really close to release. Well, the wait is finally over and the hot end is here, allowing for one-handed cold swaps on the X1 Carbon and P series of Bamboo Lab printers, and it's compatible with their entire lineup of Flowtech nozzles. MicroSwiss offered to sponsor this install video and sent over a unit for me to test. So in this video, I'll walk you through the installation process and then share the results from some flow rate tests I ran, comparing the stock hot end against Flowtech. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in, let's first take a look at what's included in the box. Inside, you'll find a printout of the installation PDF guide that's nice to have as a reference. There's also a second piece of paper that's tips for printing with this hot end, which we'll touch a bit more on after we finish the installation process. As for hardware, in the box you'll find two new fan mounting screws. Of course you've got the Flowtech hot end, and the only thing we need to do is transfer the stock fan over to it. One new inclusion to this kit is the printed nozzle changing tool. This ensures that your nozzle is tightened to the recommended 4 inch pounds. The specific version we're installing is for the X1 and X1C printer. If you have a P1P or P1S, you want to make sure you order that version of the hot end, so that way the thermistor and heating element have the correct connectors. Another thing that's fairly new is that with this hot end configuration, you've got four different options for your nozzle. You can choose between the Flowtech CM2 Standard Flow, Flowtech Brass Plated CHT High Flow, Flowtech CM2 CHT High Flow, which is the one that we have, or if you want, you can also choose the Flowtech Diamondback. As far as tools go, the only thing you need for this install is a 2mm driver. Jumping into the installation, the first thing I recommend doing is homing your machine and then jogging the bed down a few times just so that way you have adequate space to work. Then toggle the printer off and unplug the power cable. Mine probably looks a little different with the aftermarket fan shroud, but the installation process is the exact same. The front cover is just held on by magnets, so start by pulling that out towards you, and then hook the cable coming off of the front controller board so that way it goes up and around the magnet. This will allow you to throw that front cover over the x-axis carbon rods, so that way you have clear access to remove the stock hot end. We'll start by taking our 2mm driver and removing the two screws that pass through the hot end's heatsink. We're going to be reusing both of these when we install the new Flowtech hot end, so make sure you hold on to them. With those screws removed, we can grab the hot end's heater block and pull down on it so that way it detaches from the rest of the tool head. The three sets of wires coming out of the hot end are all routed through a built-in cable management hook on the right side of the tool head, so we'll need to carefully maneuver each of them to free them from that cable management hook. When it comes to actually removing those three sets of cables from the tool head board, they're all relatively small and have a clip that needs to get pressed in for them to release, so you're more than welcome to use your thumb if you think you can do it, but for myself, I found it much easier to use a small flathead in one hand to press in on the retaining clip while I sort of pull out with my other hand. The only thing we'll be reusing from the stock hot end is the heatsink fan. So unscrew this and then install it on the Flowtech heatsink. Make sure that when you go to install the fan onto Flowtech that you use the included screws and not the ones that you just pulled off of the stock fan. While they are similar, the stock ones are a bit longer and you don't want the ends of those screws to be sticking out further than they need to be. The only thing to be mindful of when installing the fan on the new heatsink is orientation. You want the blades facing outward and the cable that's going to be plugging into the tool head board to be at the top of the fan towards the direction where the thermistor and heater cable are also sticking out. That's the only thing that needs to be assembled. So with that, we can take the two screws that were holding the stock hot end into the tool head and use those to reinstall the Flowtech hot end. Start by aligning the hot end in the tool head with the wires and fan on the right side. You'll need to press up from the bottom so that way the holes in the heatsink are perfectly aligned with the holes that go through the bottom body of the extruder. 
Getting the hot end perfectly aligned can be a little tricky, so it's not uncommon when installing the first of the two screws that you sort of have to wiggle it a little bit to help with the final alignment and popping the screw into place. But once you get the first one installed, the second one will slot right in and you'll want to make sure that these are nice and tight. And we're back onto wiring. The good news is reinstalling these three cables is easier than removing. So we'll start by feeding them one by one into that wire management hook. I find it usually easiest to start with the heater wires because they're the largest and then the smaller ones just have an easier time slotting in afterwards. And then to reinstall them, you can do this in any particular order or way, but I like starting with the smallest one on the bottom, which is the thermistor followed by the fan wires, which are the four, uh, four wired plug that's going to be at the very top right. And then finally, the larger heater wires. Once these are installed, I recommend using your fingers to press down on these wires just gently. We basically just want to help route them a little bit nicer and make sure that they're not going to get bumped or pinched when we put on the tool head cover. And the final step, as far as the physical install goes, is putting on that front magnetic cover. Once we've got that secured, we can plug in our power cable and flip the switch to power the printer on. The first thing I like to do whenever I swap hot ends is one, make sure that the thermistor is displaying a temperature and then just seeing if the heating element warms up and that the thermistor reads that the heating element is indeed warming up. In this case, since we also swapped out the fan, make sure that you can hear that heatsink fan kick on as the hot end warms up. I mentioned earlier that with this hot end, there was a printout on tips for the successful printing with Flowtech, which I'll have this linked in the description, the PDF, but the main thing is that there's some parameters for printing with PLA, like keeping the front door open and the top as well propped open and not exceeding 55 Celsius on the bed when printing with PLA, which I did verify is the standard temperature set in Bamboo Labs profile. As far as the slicer settings go, the only recommendation is to avoid using long retractions when cut, just so that way the filament doesn't get pulled up too high when it's semi-soft and then has an issue going back into the hot end, which could lead to a jam. There's two other tips on the bottom, with one being specific to really small 02 millimeter nozzles, and the other just telling you to use the included nozzle changing tool to ensure that you're not over-tightening the nozzle and potentially deforming the hot end mounts. One thing I was interested in seeing was the approximate max flow rate I could achieve with the stock 0.4 Bamboo Lab hot end against Flowtech. I'd previously ran these tests with the stock hot end, but it's been a while and I wanted to make sure that I used the exact same filament. For this, I used a spool of Voxel PLA's PLA Plus and a spool of Polylite ASA. Jumping into Orca Slicer, I set up the flow rate test starting at 15 cubic millimeters per second and going up to 30. For temperatures, I stuck with the defaults, which was 220 Celsius for PLA and 270 Celsius for ASA. Using the stock hot end, PLA looked pretty good up until 22 cubic millimeters per second and then quickly dropped off. For ASA, I was pretty surprised to see the entire test complete without any obvious gaps. However, when I removed it from the printer and shined a brighter light on it, I was able to see under extrusion around the curves of the racetrack. Measuring from there, the max flow rate was approximately 24 cubic millimeters per second. Running the exact same tests with Flowtech, the PLA test was able to complete, and the only gaps I saw were in the final section at 30 cubic millimeters per second. While there is some slight variation in the sheen of the material as you get towards the top of that test, it is way less drastic compared to the difference on the stock test. For ASA, it was able to complete the entire test and I was unable to find any signs of under extrusion or gaps within that entire test print. Because of this, I fired off another test, this one being 30 to 40 cubic millimeters per second, but at 32, things started to drop off and it was a quick decline after that. Of course, these tests will vary depending on material and the temperature you run them at, but it was nice to see the gain in max flow rate. As a reminder, mine had the high flow nozzle installed, which is what mine shipped with, and I wouldn't expect these results if you're just using the standard variation of the nozzle. I'm really happy to have this up and running in my X1 Carbon, and my plan is to also get one installed in the P1S, so I have another machine that I can share nozzles with in my lineup. And that has been Flowtech for the Bamboo Lab X1, X1C, and P series of printers. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you're either up and running successfully with your new hotend or at least have a much better understanding of what the process is and some of the potential flow gains. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. And as always, if I don't know the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out to MicroSwiss to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.